Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Please be seated. What a joy to see you. You look lovely. Thank you. You never finished it. Thank you and that's it. You've got it. Sarah, my wife, sends love, of course, and uh, we just want to say thank you so much to you precious people for the way you've supported us, loved us over all these years. It would be remiss to say that uh, you, in a small way, have helped us. You have helped us tremendously. Or probably all that we have accomplished is in large part due to you. And so thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity, your prayers, your love, and the way you receive us every time. We've had uh, two good services this morning and one good one last night. Um, the first service tended to be the conservative crowd. You, you know what I mean? I really believe with Pastor Nick that this is going to be the best one today. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, just one quick announcement. Um, we do a thing called an apostolic adventure. And uh, that is on the 3rd to the 10th of January. We have only got four seats left. Um, we go for six days. We train you for six days uh, in the island of Phuket in Thailand. Um, it is on the website Asian Apostolic Adventure, one word, dot com. And so if you feel the Lord tugging at your heart to go, uh, respond. I really, I really want to tell you, the enemy doesn't like people doing this thing. And uh, every single person has had to fight the fight to get here, so, to get there. So please bear that in mind. And also, would you like me on Facebook? <laughs> the Ministry of Young Nell. Please do that, okay? I was told to say that everywhere I go because it does something for me, apparently. I don't know what it does for me. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't make me famous. I don't want to be famous. I pray it gives me more doors to people's lives. Yeah, then, then I'm, I'm game for that. All right, folk. We, we've been talking th these last few meetings about something that I'm absolutely excited and passionate about, and that is the, the concept that we can be used much more effectively, much more impactful, much more powerfully if we just know certain truths which God is, keeps revealing to me. And uh, I've, I've got something I want to drop into your spirits today which I believe is going to change literally the way you live life. exactly it. And so, <laughs> isn't it beautiful today? It's lovely, really. It, I, I'm worried about you guys. You, you're, you're slow in warming up, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so over the years I've studied this concept of, of the promises of God are so amazing in the scriptures, and the proof of it is in the early church. You look at the Acts of the Apostles, man, the, the places are changed dramatically through a few people. God falls on these apostles, man, they, they, they change the whole world. These, these are they that have turned the world upside down. Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have I give to you. Just tremendous outpourings of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 4, the place where they were standing was shaken and uh, they went out boldly preaching the word. There's such evidences of God's power, uh, being w Him being willing to make that available to people who want it. That He would be willing to move through each person, not only willing, but He commands it. That those who believe in my name, they'll cast out demons, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
And so few people actually get to live the life of these promises. So few few people actually get to see a regular outflow of signs and wonders in their environment. It concerns me. It has concerned me from the day I got born again that what's on these pages and what's made available to us is so seldom ever realized in the lives of human beings that most of us don't have a living testimony. Most of us cannot tell of a miracle just this week. That's not the way it should be. I want you to know my wife and I have made a commitment that we will flow as much in the power and the life of God is as possible wherever we go. I've been in the ministry 35 years. And I want to tell you for 35 years I've moved in signs and wonders. People get healed everywhere I go. People get delivered everywhere I go. And so I want to tell you I'm not special. There's nothing special about me. It's simply that I've learned some principles. And if you will live those principles, you'll see God do it for you. You'll see the sick healed. You'll see, see people recovered. Many, many years ago, I came to this ch- church and to this town, and uh, I, I had to go to hospital. Um, Dr. Sunil looked after me for the, the whole process of just examining and, and found that I had internal bleeding. And uh, he, he suggested that I get some rest, and these precious people organized the place to go and stay. And the first thing that Dr. Sunil did was lay his hands on me and release healing on my body. A few nights later, the healing manifested instantly in that I was lying on a bed in in Terry's father's home and I felt the Holy Spirit start to massage my back and touch me internally. It was the most amazing feeling I've ever had in my life. And when I woke up, all signs of me being ill, we're gone. That's the way we should live all the time. That's what we should be seeing for our neighbors, for our friends, for our kids. And so, you know, you long after these things. You, you want to be able to, to, to not only have God move through you, but God move to you. Do you want to see God do some stuff for you? We were in worship just now, and, and you know, we're singing songs about him breaking chains. And, and all of us have areas where we're limited, where we're, we, we're held back. And I want to tell you, I, I take every opportunity when the presence of God is in my midst to break the chains that are, have, have been brought in against me. I, I expect to be free. How do I continue to do all that I'm doing? How do I keep excited? How do I keep the the impact? Because of certain principles you're going to learn today. And so you're going to leave this place seeing God move in your situation every day of your life, if you'll do what I tell you. Every day of your life, God will show up and do something special for you. <laughs> you know, the two realms that we must understand as Christians is the natural and the spiritual realm. In Ephesians chapter 1 through to chapter 6, there are two themes that run throughout. The one theme is in Him. The other theme is in heavenly places. And this, this concept of in heav- heavenly places speaks about a realm in which certain things have been established by the power of God through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. They're established. Doesn't matter what your situation is, doesn't matter what you've been through, it has been established in you if you're a believer. And the first thing it says is in Ephesians chapter 1, it says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We have been, not we will be, not we are at the moment, but we have been. It is an established fact. 
I am blessed in every area of my life already. It's done, right? I am not, I, I'm not going to one day get favor. I have favor. The moment I'm born again, uh, Psalm 5, 12 says, the favor of God is upon me and surrounds me like a shield. It's an Old Testament scripture, but it's ours to hold every single day of our life. That word favor means preferential treatment. God spoils us, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't become a brat. God spoils us. God gives us what we don't deserve. God wants to give you bigger than you can ever dream or imagine. God is going to, your life is going to see God manifest his kindness and his goodness for every single phase you go through. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he was in my past, he is in my present, and he's waiting for me in the next place I'm going to. He's taken care of my flight to, to Thailand. He's already organizing now. He's organizing my future. He's organizing all that's going to come. There's a realm in the spirit where I have already been given. Doesn't matter what I've gone through. Doesn't matter what I seem to have lost. The Bible is clear that he is a restorer. He wants to get you to get back what you lost. And more. What a good God. These are all the promises, but so seldom do people actually see them manifest. Why? I believe it's because we don't fully understand how the spirit realm operates in regard to the natural realm. The spirit realm, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a realm that is only received and accessed by spiritual people. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 18 says, The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. So, so it is when I'm in this realm of the Spirit, when I'm in a place where I, I, I've, I've put off carnal things. See, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, I could not address you as spiritual, but as carnal. Because of your behavior towards other people. You hold envy and you divide it. And there's jealousy amongst you. If you don't deal with these things, you stay in the natural plane. And if you stay in the natural plane, you will find things like revelation does not come to you easy. You'll find that you can't receive the way you want to receive. And so, this, this thing of, of, of 1 Corinthians 2, 9, where Paul says, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for you who love him. What you've got is way below what he's given you. You are living way below what he's got for you. So how can you say that? Of course, the Bible does. Ephesians 3.20 says, exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or imagine according to the power which works in you. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above what you're experiencing now. He's trying to make your life totally different. He's trying to take you into a realm where you are not under the circumstances, you're over them. Ephesians chapter 2 speaks about the, face, the fact that we are, are, are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Our position is we are in Christ and we are seated in heavenly places. Our position in this world is that we are over the circumstances, not under them. We are called to dominate in this world. Hello, conservative church. We are called to have dominion. We are called to, to literally change what's going on around us by the power of our proclamations. We're not supposed to be controlled by what's coming towards us every day. We should get up in the morning and receive what God has got for us. We should walk in abnormal strength. 
We should walk in abnormal intellect. Everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us. So, when we start to understand that the spirit realm is where it has all been invested, that's where it is. That spirit realm is, is around you all the time. And so, for you to access it, you need faith. The hand of faith reaches into the spirit realm and pulls to me those things which God has for me. I don't want to teach on faith again because I've taught it yet, but, but let me just say this. Faith requires that I don't only see what is mine, I say it, and then I receive it. So we have got to not only believe it in our hearts, but we've got to get to the place where we, we can see the actual details of the things we want. So if I had to say, write down the vision, Habakkuk 2, 3, write down the vision and make it plain. You'll be able to write exactly what God is going to give you this week. Most people have no idea what God's going to give them. Give them. They have more faith for trouble than they have faith for victory. They imagine the problem. They can see the boss giving them a hard time. They can see themselves losing their job in layoffs. Very seldom do we see what the Bible has said. Have ever so control our lives that the truth always overcomes the lie. That's why it goes on to say in Hebrews chapter, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, the, verse 10, it's, Paul speaks and he says, and finally, my brethren, finally, the last thing I want to say on this subject, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Your fight is not your boss. Your fight is not your partner. Your fight is a strategy against you from hell. And the way you beat strategies is you have the word of God as the, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's how you win the fight. You see... Folk, you, you and I are, are, are so attacked when God tells us that something unique is going to happen. We receive a prophecy of something in the future. There's another voice that says, it's not going to happen for you. There is always this, this uh, 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 attack in the realm of, of our brain. That's where the, the fight is. That's why we have to be renewed in our thinking. And literally, the Word of God is supposed to control every facet of our lives. When we talk about our marriage, we, we see what the Word says about a successful marriage. When we're talking about emotions, we clear what the Bible says about emotions. When we talk about temptation, any area of life, um, prosperity, whatever it is, you should have the Scriptures controlling those areas. So you have children, you want to bring children up. You know every scripture on bringing children up. You study it, you get to know it, you make it yours. If we don't, we'll find ourselves in John chapter 8, verse 32. In the negative. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Years ago, I preached here on strategic lies. You can find the CD somewhere. And I spoke about the fact that what happens is the devil gives us a lie. And instead of, you shall know the truth, we shall know a lie, and it binds us. And you will find most people are unable to enter into their best because they believe a lie. They have the wrong idea of who they are, where they are, what God has given them. When a disaster strikes, they think that's going to be their lot in life. You lose a loved one, and you think, well, that's it. Now I'm never going to make it. A lady came to me in one of the meetings I was holding in, in Connecticut, and she, she said, can you please pray for me? So I said, sure, what can I pray for? She says, I'm about to be made homeless. Now, maybe she was, but the promise over her life was not as a result of her being married to a man that had abandoned her. 
The promise over her life was on the basis that she had received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Oh, you've got to catch that. Because so many people face something that changes their future. And as it changes their future in their mind, they start to accept a lower life. The Bible doesn't say you will prosper if you married. The Bible doesn't say you will prosper because you're an American. The Bible says if you meditate on the law of the Lord day and night, whatever you do will prosper. We've got to realize he's already supplied. Through his poverty, we were made rich. I'm not talking about an arrogance. I'm talking about an acceptance of truth. John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. How will you know the truth? John 8, 31. If you abide in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The problem, the problem with most of us is we do not know the word on the issue. We do not know what God wants to tell us. We do not know what is the final outcome of Jesus' death and resurrection. We don't, know, we don't understand that he reversed the curse. We don't understand that now God can walk with us in the garden again. We don't understand that sickness no longer should be around us. We don't understand that uh, being, being in a place of poverty and lack is not God's best for us. You might sit there and say, well, you know, not everybody gets healed and not everybody. Yes, that's right, because we don't believe. God has got more than enough. God has got more than enough. God has a way of getting what you need to you in split second moments. Just within a day, God can change your whole future. God has men and women all over this world that are being moved by him. We own now, we are the owners of a brand new minibus given to us by, by just a brother that observed our position. He went home, he, he literally he sent us an email said, how much do you need uh, to buy a new van? Please check them out and we'll... We'll, I'm going to send you the money. I said, I don't need to go and check them out. I checked them out a year ago. <laughs> I already know which one I want, and this is its price. I know exactly how, how much it is. I know the color. I know exactly what I want to do with it. I was already ready for my, my blessing to come. <laughs> I wanted to build a house because I can't... Um, Adopt my daughter unless I've got a home. I didn't have two beans to rub together. I mean zero, ladies and gentlemen. Lady walked up to me. We didn't do the faith without hints thing. You, you know what I mean? I'm, I just want you all to know I'm believing God for a house. <laughs> None of that stuff. Just go before the Lord. Lord, you're the supplier. I tell you what, it was not three weeks into the praying. I got a phone call, would you come to lunch with us? A person that never comes to my meetings said, we would love to know your vision and how you're going to get there. And the last thing we, that we said is to get what we want to do, we have to get a house. So they said, do you want to buy a house or rent a house? What do you want? To, we said, we want to build our own house. They said, please tell us how much it's going to cost and we will transfer the money. I said, I'll tell you already. I've already found out. <laughs> the next day, they transferred the full price of building our house into our bank account in Thailand. We've got the house. We live there.
Don't talk to me about God not caring for the poor. When you've got no money, you're poor. We've been poor many times. But I do not accept the statement, I'm poor. Because I'm rich. Because any given moment, God will write me out a check for more than you can even imagine. I have a pro prophecy over me. It's nearly 30 years old from two of the top prophets in your country, Bill Hammond and Graham Cook. And the prophecy is this, that God is going to prosper you so much that you will have three millionaires around you. One will be a woman, two will be men. When you walk up to them and say, I need 500,000, they will write you the check without, without even questioning you because you've been so faithful with God. They will write you out a check for a million. God is going to give you, this is the first thing, He's going to give you buses. When I got my first bus, I knew the blessing had started. What had been prophesied is now manifesting. He said, you're going to have planes that you can use to take your teams all over, over the world. God's going to give you houses. We've just built our second house now. I'm going to, on nine, November the 15th, I'll pay it off. Pay it off. Finished. There's a way we can live, ladies and gentlemen, that's way, way higher than we are living at the moment. We can get things that, that we, we don't even understand. We're always there. I believe it's going to be a tremendously sad day when we realize how much God has given to us already. How rich he's wanted our relationships to be. How much he wanted to use us to change lives. I don't want to get there and be disappointed by what I could have done. I want to go out from this place. I want to step out of here into glory. So on fire that whoever comes into my, my immediate vicinity is going to get changed by the power of God. Amen. And it's already happening. I'm just telling the, the earlier group, I had a young man drive all the way up from Philadelphia to uh, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. He, he, he didn't believe he could get baptized in the Holy Ghost. So the friends of his brought him here and said, we know a man's going to pray for you and it's all going to change. Well, I forgot they were coming and I've got to phone my wife after the meeting and so I had little time. So we got to the hotel, they sat down. I said, what is the need? They said, this guy hasn't been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants it. So I looked at him and I said, I haven't got time. You receive right now. Okay, I don't want you tarrying, I don't want you worrying, I don't want you anything. You just get it, all right? And he started to laugh like you. So I thought, uh, he couldn't stop laughing. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost right there. He walked out of the hotel holding his mouth because the spirit of joy hit him. He was drunk and he was, he was overwhelmed. Come on, we, we've got to see God use us as salt and light. We're supposed to drive da back darkness. We're supposed to bring changes to regions and cities and nations. Most of us are just believing to get through tomorrow. Got no dreams, got no visions. When you're busy about God's work, you'll be busy about yours. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Most of us have given up. We just think we're supposed to be bread, what do you call that? Bread winners? Is that the right word? Why does that sound so strange? <laughs> you know, what we're doing is going from month to month, year to year, waiting for retirement. We have, been, we have been given every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I has not seen nor ear heard what's waiting for you. You have to access it. The way you access it is by knowing what it says. So to know what it says, you need revelation. 
But God has revealed this to us by the Spirit. Until you get revelation, you can't get the faith to get what's yours. How do you get revelation? You receive it. You receive it. What am I talking about? It's the most important part of my sermon. I'm telling you now, when, when we see what the Bible promises, we have to learn to, at the moment that the Bible says it'll arrive, we have to receive it. John 1.12, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. I don't know anymore that people preach that we have to receive Christ. They preach you've got to be born again. They teach that you need to have a relationship with God. But the fact that you actually need to put some uh, a mental effort into the moment that you receive him, that you realize he has come in and he dwells there. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. That has to be a revelation to you. Otherwise, it'll always be you hoping God shows up sometime. God's not going to show up sometime. He has already shown up. He's in you. So this whole concept of, of, of getting washed in our, from our sins, when we, when we fall, when we fail, we should understand that 1 John 1, 9 isn't for some time period. It's an instant happening. If I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to what? Forgive, there I see it. Crossed out, it's no longer there. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So there I see myself just getting washed by the Holy Ghost, blood of Jesus. I am free, clean. Once I confess it, I turn from it, it no longer hounds me. But there are people that do things wrong that cannot settle it in their hearts. They walk around with shame and guilt and condemnation. They receive condemnation quicker than they receive cleansing. But the word says, if I confess, he'll clean me. So my duty is the moment I confess my sin is to take a moment to switch into the spiritual vision I'm supposed to have and see myself being cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Right? And so when I step out of that, it's forgiven, forgotten, and I'm clean. I can start again. It's not cheap grace. Because sometimes you have to do uh, some form of, of uh, giving back. What's that word? Restitution. Sometimes you have to do some restitution. But the Bible tells us about what to do when. But when the Bible gives us an absolute, we should ac accept it as that. Ask and you shall receive. We don't live like that. We ask, then we ask again, then we ask again, we ask again and again. Maybe you've got to hear me if I say it a different way. 1 John 5, 12 says, if I ask anything according to his will, I know he hears me. And if he hears me, I have the petition that are required of him but I don't feel it. That's the problem. We don't live by feelings, we live by? This word is absolute. So when it says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, you need to have the attitude that it's, I'm going to find this thing. Not maybe, not if, no doubt. When you say to this mountain, Mark 11, 22, you say to this mountain, be moved. And do not doubt in your heart that what you say will happen. You'll have what you say. You and I should be speaking to things and expect them to turn around. You and I should be laying hands on the sick and being totally confused if nothing changes immediately. Because I've, this is the important part of the, the sermon. To, to actually receive in the midst of an event 
or a moment in the spirit. What do I mean by a moment? We're busy worshiping and you just sense the, the, the presence and the love of God on you. Right there, you can just enjoy the feeling or you can receive the grace that comes with it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So man, I've had a tough week and uh, you know, I've been in the heat, man. We're, we're battling the enemy, we're battling things and we believe in God for something special and I'm in the meeting and as I'm worshiping, suddenly the place fills with the presence of God. At that moment, I receive Acts chapter 3, verse 18 following. Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. I just receive your refreshing, Lord. Actual, I'm getting it now, reaching my hand out, taking it. At the last service, the young man, I think called Jason, was sitting in the front chair. Called him forward and I said to him, I've got a $5 note that I'd like to give you. I held it like this. So he just looked at me. I said, I've got a $5 note that I'd like to give you. I've got a $5 note that I'd like to give you. I've got a $5 note that I'd like to give you. So he grabbed it. I said, now it's yours. The point is obvious. The Lord can hold out the blessing all day until you take it. That's why I believe sometimes when prophecies are being declared and God says, I'm going to do this for you and it's aimed at somebody else, but you know that's what you need. You need to just steal a little bit straight away. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just need to say, I'll take that, thank you. That's mine. And from now on, that's what's going to happen in my life. Receive the Holy Ghost. So well, I just don't feel he's here. Well, that's the problem. It's not about feeling. It's about taking it. Settling it right now. That's it. God's given it to me. I had a ganglion on my, my wrist many years ago. Went to the hospital. They, they say, we, we've got a problem. We've got no records of, of you or your family. We, we don't know who's taken them. I said, nobody took them. We've never come to hospital. <laughs> so they said, she, said, she said these words. She said, that's impossible. I said, I'm telling you. We have never been to the, hosp the hospital. Our kids have always had perfect health. We've had perfect health. It's no problem. But I've got this thing. And I felt ashamed because why am I, I at hospital? Just because I'm looking at something, I have no idea what it is. Well, I do know what it is. It's an illegal immigrant that shouldn't be there. <laughs> right? So I, I, they, they booked the, the, the operation at the time when they were going to cut it out and all this stuff. And uh, I got home and I just said, you're going to die, disappear, disintegrate now in Jesus' name. Next morning I woke up, gone. F phone the hospital. I said, um, cancel the operation. She said, Mr. Nell, you don't have to be scared. It's not that big. I said, I'm not scared. It's gone. The Lord has healed me. Amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. We accept too much. We will receive from the enemy before we will receive from God. We just hear, you're going to die early. You're going to get cancer. That cough. Listen, TV helps us, doesn't it? I arrived in your country, and I put on TV the one evening, and there it is. A guy half in a, a, an ice cube. The time for flu has arrived. The time for healing has arrived. <laughs> Touch somewhere on your body that you need to be healed. I'm telling you, God's starting to heal us right now. Just receive. Just put your hand. While I'm talking, just get healed. Just get healed. Receive it. How do I receive it? Same way. Take the thing. Thank him. 
I've got it, Lord. I've got it. It's, I see. I see it going, going right through my body. I see my blood being cleansed. I see that, that ear opening. I thank you, Lord. You're doing a job on me right now. You're going to have testimonies this week of people who got healed in every service. What are you believing for? What are you believing for in your situation? Because you better be ready. I'm going to bless you today. So is Pastor Nick, but I'm going to bless you just now. And when I bless you, it's going to fall on you, you and your home. That's the mistake we make. We should bless children at least seven times in their life. We should bless them at conception, bless them at birth, bless them when they go to school, bless them when they get to 13, bless them when they go into the business world, bless them when they get married, and bless them when they have children so they can carry on the whole thing. But we don't, we don't give anything, so nothing flows from us. It, not, it should not just be to us, it should be through us. So you have authority over certain things. The Bible says, those who believe in my name, they'll cast out demons, they'll lay hands on the sick, Mark 16, 16. I don't care how old you are. You've got some young people in this room. You listen to me. There's no age in the kingdom. My kids were praying for healing and casting out demons when they were in their teenagerhood. They traveled with me preaching and ministering the power of God. Church, it's about time that we, we have special days, sorry, special moments in a day where we receive what is ours. When we stand up in the morning, we should position ourselves under the Holy Ghost and say, your mercies are new every morning. I receive new mercies today, Lord. You told me to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I receive strength right now. Quicken me, Holy Spirit. Quicken my body. How do you think we do what we do? How do you think we travel as much as we do? How do I keep so strong and excited in the Lord? We haven't got a church to help us. It's because I've learned how to receive every day. I'm in a car and suddenly I sense the presence of God. And I just, I just I'm not driving so I can do it. <laughs> just thank you, Jesus. You will hear me many, many times say thank you, Jesus, in the middle of nothing. Because I'm just, I've turned on the switch and I'm allowing grace and peace that is released every group of people. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. When, when the apostle said that, grace and peace was received. He wasn't there to give it. They just received it. Grace and peace to you. Receive peace in your home. Receive peace in your environment. Receive peace in your business. Receive peace in your mind. Now, receive it. It's a gift. Grace to you. Grace, the power to live the life. Receive the Lord's joy. Receive the Lord's joy. Let go of that depressed state. Receive a, a spiritual touch that's going to make you be happy again. How do we change, ladies and gentlemen, if it's not a divine transference? Every time God wants to transfer to us, it's through faith and reception. The Bible teaches us in Matthew 13 that the word is like seed. It, it goes into the ground, supposed to. It's not to be lying on the surface. It will be stolen. That's a big revelation. You should catch that one. If you do not prepare your heart to get what God's giving you, it's gone. Psalm 119 verse 67 before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, I keep your word. Mary treasured the word in her heart. Made it a reality. 
presence of God's in the room. I'm telling you right now, the presence of God's in the room. Do you know there's a promise where two or three are gathered in my name? There I am in the midst. But he's manifesting himself right now. Some of you are weeping. Some of you are, are, are being touched physically. Receive the refreshing of God. Don't sing again. Don't worship with all your heart without expecting something to fall on you. Where God is, there's not just you giving to God, God pours out back to you. And you're going to receive strength for the weak. You can't sit in the chair and hope by osmosis that power is just going to float into your life. It's not going to work like that. You receive the moment. You've got to know that when you, you're really praising, you're doing high praises, you're binding demonic forces. So you release that. While you, you release binding, just send it out. That thing that has been messing your family around, bind it up. It has no right for, to touch your life. We are more than conquerors. We are always caused to triumph. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I'm calling you to live in divine transfer. I'm calling you to get up every day. Get yourself under the spout where the glory is coming out. Let God pour on you. He, is, he reversed the curse. He reversed the garden. Get what's yours. Harvest time, get what's yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raise your right hand and receive. I bless your homes. I bless your personal space. I bless your finances. And I bless your health. I bless your relationships. I bless your marriages. I bless your children. I release to you now in the name of Jesus. This is when you receive it. Let's make a time, okay? When I say the last in the name of Jesus, you take it into yourself and you've got it. I bless your path. I bless your future. And I do it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive Right now, your whole week is going to be different. Receive right now and just thank Him. Thank Him. The moment you got it, no doubt, don't listen to the, the second voice. It's only one voice. It's the promise of God. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I'm going to change your situation, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.